Hi, good evening, everybody. It's good to see all of you here. Um, I would like to um, first introduce myself to you, not just as a social professor, because as a social professor, you don't really know what I do, you know. Uh, actually, I started to um, study in Fatima when I was a PhD student. So my first study basically is to focus on how breast cancer survivors of managing their lymphedema in their daily life. And it was supposed, uh, supported by National Institute of Health. It was the first study really to understand how people do this lymphedema managing their life. And then from my study, I understand there's a lot of risk factors we never you know, talk about it, and patients don't even know what lymphedema is. For most of my patients, it took them about like seven years to be diagnosed to be um, lymphedema patients. So I decided to do some of the risk reduction studies. So this is my six studies, actually, looking at how to really building a routine to achieve the optimal you even after the cancer diagnosis and cancer treatment. So I'd like to um, ask all the audience, so you know, just get your hands count so that you know who you are, why you are here, and then I can give my uh, lectures to your need. How about that? So how many of you are the patients with lymphedema? Okay. Okay. How many of you are cancer patients who are at risk of lymphedema? Okay. And uh, how many of you just interested? Just be here. And so, for those who are interested, are your professional healthcare professionals or just a caregiver? Oh. Healthcare professionals. Oh, caregivers. Okay. Very good. So, so we have a three different audience, but I think. We can almost understand each other and then say how we as a caregivers we can do and how I as a lymphedema patient I what I can do so I can help out a bit. Um, I was thinking about if you can move this part and I stay because I need to demonstrate a little bit sometimes. So like is that okay? You guys can see me? Yes. Okay. Very good. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to so the major point I want to go today is really looking at how are you going to build a routine to help, I think, I hope I have a movable, you know, I can move, you know. Is that okay if you, uh, I have to have a mic, right? Yeah, you can yeah. kind of move it around a little bit. I mean, not that much. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, this is good. Yeah, this is good. Sorry about that part. So. If you don't get any message back today, but the only message I really want you to go, to go with today is to, you really can give a routine to make yourself live a really comfortable life. And also, if you help your um, family, you know, uh, family members who are suffering from lymphedema, you can also help them to build a routine to help that. So with that, I'm going to go with you and say, what should we do? So first of all, I know I very clearly I thought it it's majority of you will be the breast cancer patients, but definitely you have to remember lymphedema is not just a swelling. Lymphedema it's a syndrome. So one of the manifestations is just swelling. Besides swelling, a majority of the patients will have what we call firm their arms, their legs are firm and they will feel tightness, and they will feel fullness. The majority of them will have also have pain, aching, numbness, and tingling. So for the family members, so for family members who are taking care of the patients, when, when you heal them, like you know, say, I just don't feel comfortable, you know, I really want to chop my arm, I want to really get rid of my legs, mm -hmm. and you'll understand how much suffering you have. If you understand it's a symptom, you will understand how much they suffer in their daily life. And then you will have a little bit more patience with them, you know. And um, so I want to basically emphasize this is not just a simple swelling, it's a symptom. Actually, you need to pay attention to how it. You 
And in order to understand what is a lymphedema, so first of all, we are here talking about secondary lymphedema. So secondary lymphedema usually is not born with it. About 6% of populations in this United States or in the world, they have a primary lymphedema, which is a different mechanism, which is related to different things. But majority, 90% of patients in the contemporary world are because of the secondary causes. So basically, either majority of them is from cancer treatment, you know, either melanoma, ovarian cancer, uh, breast cancer, and uh, any of the you know cancer, or sometimes it's because just uh, trauma. For example, you fell and you breaking your elbows, and all of a sudden you're breaking down your lymphatic systems, right? Or any times you have a very bad insect bites, and it's just unfortunate it's go into your lymphatic systems, so you, your lymphatic system started to working out, and you get lymphedema. So. Today we're talking about secondary lymphedema. Majority of them is caused by the cancer tre uh, treatment. So for the cancer treatment, basically we talk about like a removal of the lymph nodes. People think about, you know, it's just a removal of the lymph nodes. But unfortunately, any time when you have a surgery and when you cut your body and it will interrupt the lymphatic system. And radiation will cause lymphedema is because the fibrotic tissues and also inflammations, which it will interrupt, you know, the lymphatic system. So when you have a compromised lymphatic systems, and basically you will have an effective lymph drainage because each day we will have a three liters of the lymphatic fluid in our body to go through our body. Okay. So if if you have a location which you have a surgery or either you have a radiation and basically the drainage on that part started to be slow. So at the very beginning, your body is going to try to compensate. So it's okay. But all of a sudden, if you have a little cuts or insect bites or just like overuse it and basically your body will bring all the fluid to that part because uh, blood flow will bring nutrients and also bring the white blood cell to help. So you have a much more fluid in that area. And when the fluid is there, and it cannot really go back anymore because you already have to feel good. So that's when all of a sudden, one day you wake up, you find your arm are hot, your legs are hot, and you swell up all of, all of a sudden, right? Or you will just have a sunny day, like basically everything's fine until five years later, all of a sudden you feel like, why my this arm is bigger than this? You know, it's because the slowing accumulations of the fluid there, and which makes what we call accumulations of fluid. Because the accumulation of the fluid there in the lymphatic fluid, you will have a bacteria, you will have a viruses, you will have like some cancer cells. So when those fluids accumulate in some places, and sometimes it will cause the local inflammation. So that's why for patients who continuously have a lot of accumulations on that part, a lot of times they will have what we call skin infection, which is the cellulitis. That's why all of a sudden you have a fever, and all of a sudden your arm or your leg study to be red and hurting and blown, and that's what we call the inflammation and then you will have a chronic lymphedema. So understand that part will help you to understand how you will do on a daily life to make all of this controlled, okay? And according to um, International Lymphatic um, like Society, Lymphology Society, there's a three stages. So first stages is what we call you don't see anything. The only thing you feel is like, a, I don't understand why my legs is a little bit heavy. I don't understand why this arm is a little bit heavier than that one. Or I don't understand when all of a sudden I cannot move my arm anymore. I don't understand why all of a sudden I have to feel like I have to move this feet like you use, use a lot of force. And that's the first one. You don't see any swellings. All you feel is a heavy, aching or just not comfortable. 
And then you will have a second stage, what we call the early stage. You will see the visible swelling, and you can still see some indentations. If we catch, uh, catch the lymphedema like in this stage, early stage, stage one, usually if we treat aggressively, and actually <coughs> we will be able to reverse it. So that's why early detection is so important, you know. But if we catch up in the second stage, that's when you still have some indentations when you push, but your skin started to harden and thicken. It takes a little bit one more time to really to treat. That's why some of you will feel so frustrated. I have been going to this lymphedema therapy for years now. Why I don't see any changes? I don't see my arms become small. I don't see my legs small, right? It's because there's a lot of fibrotic tissues and which will not break down and the fluid will not go. So it takes a lot longer for us to break down the fibrotic tissues in order to have the fluid moving. So that's why. And then the stage three is the ones we really need to see, like if the arms are almost like a twice the other ones. It's hardened, they cannot move their fingers, they cannot do anything. And I never really see, I used to see them years ago, but right now I do not see them. Usually I see stage two. Stage three, and you also see the lymphatic fluid just streaking by itself because it's too much, because it's too much. So whenever, if you are a breast cancer patient, your job is to really make yourself from stage two to stage one. If you are stage one patient, you need to make yourself just as a stage zero patient. But if you are at risk of patients, so when we talk about at risk of patients, it's a patient who underwent uh, cancer treatment or cancer, uh, like a surgery and radiations, your job is like a, you don't even need to have a stage <coughs> one. With the stage one, you need to do some exercises to help yourself to really get rid of one. And then so, with that in mind, you know which goal you need to work for, right? And so you establish your routine and say, this is what I should do. And in order to understand what is the lymphatic system, I want to make sure you understand um, how the lymphatic system works. So first of all, the right lymphatic duct is here. And it basically only drains the right portion of your, you know, body. So it drains your right arm, your right head, neck, and also just the right trunk. But left lymphatic systems actually will drain your left arm and your left face, neck, head, and also your lower extremities. So that means to say, if you have a right arm breast cancer, majority of times you will only have affected side of this part, you know. But if you have a left side compromised, and that's a lot of times our breast cancer patients say, I don't understand why I have a lymphedema, I just have a breast cancer surgery. Why I have a lymphedema not only on my arms, but also on my legs. It's because the left part also drains the lower extremities. So if you, if you have a right leg lymphedema and your job is not just push the fluid on this side, you have to make sure you push the fluid on this side and come to the menstrual. And so that you can go to kidney, can excrete it, you know. And then so in order to understand how are we going to help us, you have to understand, you know, anatomy of the lymphatic system so that you know which you go. So for example, if you have a right arm, have a lymphedema, you have to really push this fluid here to the left so that the whole fluid will go there. But the left ones, you have to go there. And then that's also why the large muscle movement helps because it, it helps the whole lymphatic system, okay? And people will ask how important the lymph nodes is. The lymph nodes have a three functions. When the lymph nodes is there before the cancer, and actually the lymph nodes will help to direct the fluid, you know, the fluid will come here, but direct the fluid to one direction. So like for example, direct all the fluid on the right side to the here, to the menstrual, you know, 
basically come here to the ministry and also left to, to ministry. So basically, you will have a lot of that come to help the fluid, but also have only two that to come. And also, lymph nodes will help to filter and also clean all those bacteria, cancer cells, and everything. And also remember, lymphatic system is a part of the immune system. If you're taking care of your immune systems, and basically you will taking care of your recurrence or build, build your health in much better shape. And so that's also why lymph nodes removed still a major implications for lymphedema. So right now with the sentinel lymph nodes removed, which is when only patients have a one or three lymph nodes removed, and you still have like a three percent to five percent of patients will have lymphedema, you know. So that's why. And with more than 10 lymph nodes removed, usually you will have like about 20% of patients will have lymphedema with that part. And uh, interesting enough, lymphatic systems is the only systems we are different from each other. For example, you will have one heart and I will have one heart, right? You will have two big nodes of lungs, I will have two. And if you have two kidneys, I will have two kidneys. But lymphatic systems is different. We don't know how many lymph nodes we have. You will have a patient, 200 lymph nodes. You will have a patient about 1,500 lymph nodes. That's also why you will have a patient who did not even have any lymph nodes removed, who developed severe lymphedema. Chances are she only have a very small amount of lymph nodes, and the body cannot compensate. And you will have a patient who are 86 year old and have a complete lymph nodes removed 30 or 50 years ago. She's fine. She is probably the lucky ones who has a 15 lymph nodes there, right? So that's also why it makes it so hard for us to identify who is at risk, who is not at risk. Because we don't know. We really don't know. And there's no procedures. MRI, CT scans cannot really tell us where our lymph nodes are, okay? Except when the lymph nodes have a cancer, they will be able to see. Other than that, the healthy ones, you don't. So we will not be able to tell us which one has how many lymph nodes, and maybe, you know, we can tell them. That also makes things very difficult. Another thing I want to talk about is the lymphatic system, uh, like a lymphatic um, vessels. Lymphatic vessels is not like what we call like a vet arteries or your veins. Your arteries and your veins is moving the fluid all the time because your heart are pumping, right? With the heart pumping, so your artery blood and your veins are moving. But lymphatic vessels only moves when your muscle pumps. How are you going to get the muscle pumps? The only thing is large muscle movement, dance, you know, exercises, walk, you know, sit, stay around. Any large muscle movement will create muscle pump. When you create muscle pump, and that help the fluid going, help the fluid going. And another reason, the lymphatic fluid, I really need this, the lymphatic fluid basically only goes one direction. So when you have this segment full, and then it will open this uh, segment. So basically, that's also why. How many of you know a manual lymph drainage, like a massage? How many of you? Would you yeah. So the manual lymph drainage basically is one treatment for lymphedema patient, patients. Basically, it's just try to give a little bit, you know, um, massage to help the segment. So basically, what you do. You push a little so the valve will open, the fluid will go, right? So now you understand why you have to do the lymphatic drainage, right? It's just to help a little bit. And then there's different ways people do the lymphatic drainage massage. So when you do this, it doesn't work. So when you do this, it doesn't work because it doesn't help to open that. That's why that one direction massage will help you to push the fluid and open the valve. So that's also why the patient who doing those circular motions doesn't help, because it doesn't really help the fluid. It's really you need to push this 
a little, so the valve open, and also very gentle, so like almost like butterfly touch, you know, like almost um, when you do that, you always like a don't cup yourself basically. You gently try to move the fluid. You know, the same thing with the lower leg, you gently touch from here to here. But if you're on the right side, you basically you do like this and move your foot and here. And if you're here, and you go here and move your foot here. So basically, you know the anatomy and you know how to move and then so anytime you have you know you have a you have a time you just little gently push so in that way you know why I do this so why people say when when you do this that's a walk because when you do this you basically push the fluid like this so you won't open it you really don't want you know for, to not do it but there's so, so much about lymphatic systems which we don't know we really don't know that much you know but what we know is the lymphatic systems only, only moves when the muscle pumps. And also, only moves when you breathe. So when you have a nice deep breathe, and then you're breathing, I really hate this. <laughs> Sorry, don't take that part. I hate this. Yeah. And then so when you breathe, basically you stimulate the right lymphatic duct and left lymphatic duct and actually push all this fluid to the mainstream and go to kidney and excrete it out. So that's the reason why nice deep breathing is so good for everybody, you know, is because even if you are healthy people, when you breathe in, you stimulate your lymphatic system you strengthen your immune system, you feel better. You know, that's also why. So one thing that's important I want you to know. So lymphatic systems can only move when the muscle pumps, when you have a nice deep breathing. Okay, that's very good. And the people will do, um, you know, um, the surgeries and radiations as your risk factors. I want you to take a look at this in a different way. Think about Surgeries and radiations, all of them are necessary. You know, when you have a life-threatening illness, basically the most important thing is to survive. And those are the surgeries you have to take, surgery, radiation, chemos. Those are the measures you have to take to survive. Lymphedema is something not good. It's very de debilitating. It's, it's daily harassment, right? However, it's not life-threatening. And with a little effort, you can do every day, and you should live a very good life. So I want you to not uh, thinking about, oh, a red red, I should not do that. No, you should be really happy you survive, but little actions you can take can improve your life. So I want you to take this way. And uh, I also want you to um, know it's not just a breast cancer. Any of the cancers involve surgeries, involve radiations. Patients will have, a, you know, um, potential to have lymphedema. And especially prostate cancer patient and melanoma patient with low extremity lymphedema and at risk for low extremities, you have to really help yourself because if you take care of it every day, and you might not have like, accumulation of the fluid, so that will help uh, a lot. And the second, that some of the uh, you know, factors is what we call immobility. And now you understand why immobility. You don't move, you don't walk, and basically you don't exercise. It's because you don't create any muscle pumps, of course you will have fluid, right? So for all of you, if you cannot remember anything today, the only thing is that you move. Get up and walk to steps every hour, right? Mm -hmm. Or just like get up, just march on the spot, fine. So get yourself a large muscle movement. Even just the, you know, marching on the spot and moving your arms and pick up, you know, take your, it's fine, it will be fine. As long as you get moving. And then for the, you know, for the obesities and BMIs, there's two reasons for that. 
One is that when you're overweight and actually you, you put more pressures on the lymphatic system. So the lymphatic system is harder to move. It's harder to move. Second, with obesity, and actually you will have a much more internal inflammation. So with a lot of internal inflammation, actually you will have more water returned. With the water retention and the whole lymphatic system getting a little bit more uh, overloaded, that's why obesity and BMI is a predictor for lymphedema. However, I do not want you to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm obese, I'm overweight, you know, I'm, you know, no. Basically, um, it's, this is just possible risk factors. But if you can help yourself to basically not gain any weight after the, you know, chemo, after the radiation, what they found out is not the baseline weight. It's basically after the, all those treatment, you can wait. That's put you into risk factor. So if you can help yourself just by eating a little bit healthy, you don't really need to go to vegan. You don't really need to say, like I want to go to the, this program. All you need to do is just try to a little bit mindful eating. Say, I'm going to eat a little bit less than what I, I need right now. I'm going to eat more vegetables. I'm going to eat a little bit more uh, for meat and anything, basically, just like you eat a um, little bit more poultry instead of the red meat, you know, you will be okay. If you can do that, over the year, you will maintain your body weight. And so, don't fuss about it. And also, um, sudden weight loss is not good for your body either, because your body has to reject, you know, readjust it, and that's why the bounce off will be quicker. So try very slowly. You know, even you just lose five pounds a year, it's a great progress. Or even if you don't get any weight after the cancer treatment, you are great. So I want you to remember that part. Okay. And uh, another thing is the genetic. We never thought there's no genes related to lymphedema, but now our study we found there's a six genes related to lymphedema. Four of the genes related to the lymphatic systems, and specifically related to LUM, like we said, arm lymphedema and leg lymphedema. And two genes basically related to inflammation, a lot of times is related to breast lymphedema. So that's also why it tells us why we cannot identify who is at risk, who is not at risk, because there's a genetic components there, you know. Second, you know, any times when you have like an inflammation, injuries, and even extreme temperatures will trigger lymphedema. So all of this makes a little bit more, you know, uh, hard for us to understand all of this. So, but I want you to uh, understand this little part. Now, how are you going, so like for those of you who do not have lymphedema, how are you going to identify yourself? Well, you cannot wait until one of the sudden you have a big arm. So basically, symptoms is your own monitor. So you monitor your symptom experience. For people who have an lymphedema, your job is also monitor those symptoms. So for people basically have an lymphedema, you should only have five symptoms each day. For people who do not have an lymphedema, you should not have any symptom or only two symptoms each day. So symptoms is a good monitoring. If you have more symptoms, you know there's a problem. So those symptoms, what I want, I want you. Anytime if you are just a risk at risk patient, you if you have a heavy, if all of a sudden you feel your arm heavy, or if all of a sudden one of your legs started to heavy, and you need to call your surgeon so that you can get evaluated at risk and get treated immediately. Second, for the, you know, if any of the time, like a tight, firm, and numbers, and also acting, if you count your symptoms as exceed five or six, you know there's a problem. So any time, you need to watch your symptoms. So for breast cancer patients who have lymphedema, usually 
you only need to have a five to six symptoms, exclude any swelling. So anytime if you feel like your arm swell, not seeing the swell, basically just feel the swell of the swelling, and feel the swelling is on your fingers, or maybe just feel the swell, swelling is on your toes, or maybe just the ankle part, you need to go to call your surgeons to get evaluated. Because the earlier you do, the better you are. So all of us, and we should really be looking at our symptom experience, because that is much more better than the tape measurement. When you, how many of you go to the a physical therapist to measure you, say, oh, you're fine, it's not two centimeters, right? And actually, this is much, much more accurate than not tape measurement. Am I getting my message across the room? Okay, good. Second, you know, if the measurement, when you go to have a measurement at NYU, um, you do have some people to do the tape measurement, but this is not the best one. But at NYU, we do have what we call the parameter, which is to use the infrared parameter, and actually can almost measure like a 0.5 centimeters differences. That's why when we can catch patients early. And we can also look at their volume differences. So like when we say the volumes exceed 200 here, and usually we will send them to the lymphedema therapist very quickly. So that's the advantage here at NYU. And we also use what we call the bioimpedance, which is like an EKG, use the electronic currencies, to really looking at how much fluid in the lymphatic system. So exactly, and we are not measuring the size of the arms or the size of the legs anymore, we measure the fluid. So this one actually, uh, with the breast cancer patient at risk, we can almost exactly tell the patient how much fluid in your lymphatic system you should do what, what kind of exercise you sh should do. So I encourage you to so monitor your symptoms on a daily basis, and then if you have something, call your surgeon and get yourself measured, and so you know exactly what you should do. And how many of you do what we call the complete decongestive therapy, like a wrapping? How many of you do wrapping? Like a wrap your arms? No. How many of you use the com uh, like a compression sleeves? Okay. How many of you use the <coughs> compression stocking? Like you do, right? And how many? Um, so basically, CDT is what we call the right now um, standard care. So basically, with initial treatment, and we need to get the swelling down, you know, you will have the wrapping of your arms, and after that, you will have stockings. And uh, sometimes the whole things will work, sometimes doesn't work, right? So you know why, you know. So I want you to um, thinking about why sometimes the compression doesn't work. So the compression sleeves and compression stockings and I actually have to be fitted very well. So anytime if you have a, you, after you take off your stockings and also your sleeves, if you see there's the indentations or if it's the wrinkles here, and all of a sudden you don't feel good, you need to take it off. Because a lot of times, compression only do one thing. Compressions only push a little pressure on your skin and push the lymphatic system. But does that enhance your muscle pump? No. Does not help you to really uh, stimulate your lymphatic systems? No. So you have to think about that so just one method for you to keep the fluid down, but you have to add another two methods on it, on it, okay? So that's one thing. And um, lymphatic drainage, it's important. Because when you massage, and you, you learn a different way to massage yourself, right? You learned how to do this way, right? And you learned how to do here, and you learned how to do here. You learned this way, or you learned this way, right? Different ways, or you learned this way. If you do not have a time to do anything each day, all I need you to do, basically, is very simple, effective, like what I said very nicely move here, if it is this side, if this side, just here. 
So any frame you just go to your heart. And if it's the lower extremities, go here and here. So basically. And it's easy. And actually, it will be very effective. The only thing you need to remember, like a little carpet. So I do not want you to do like this. Carpet is not good. So basically, just here, beautifully, you know, come down. So very nicely that. Carpet is not good. So if you carpet, you, you know, cut down those. That's why such a massage is not good. You know, you have to really, you know, lightly do that. So lymphatic massage is good, and you should. You know, you should help yourself, especially if you already develop lymphedema. That's one thing you should really continue doing it. And um, compressions, and you know, if you have to do it, you really need to have a good therapist to teach you, because bad compressions basically make a worse of it. You know, and actually sometimes it will be permanently damage your lymphatic system. That's why. To find a good therapy centers, you know, it's important. I, you know, I know I work with a lot of therapists, and I actually uh, the Rask have a much much better. You know, I trust them. So basically, it's, I'm not advertising, but no, that's the place I really send my patients. I know they will give you a good results for. It. And uh, how many of you use the mechanic pumps? You do right. So if works, works. But you have to be careful with mechanic pumps because all the mechanic pumps do is try to push the you know push the fluid to the heart, and it sometimes does not come to the heart. Sometimes it just come to here. You will find out that the whole fluid is accumulated here, right? So you need to make sure. Basically, if you use the pump, you need to make sure you clear the fluid before it pumps. After the pump, you need to you know. I personally, from my own um, research, I do really um, recommend pump that much because first of all, you forget to do your own pumping. You don't do your own pumping exercises. Second, you rely so much on just push the fluid. And then you do not have a lymphatic progress. So I would like you to encourage you to use less pump, but really help your lymphatic system to you know to grow that's more important and however when people already have lymphedema you can use what we call nice sleeve there's a different companies which will give you nice sleeves and those nice sleeve it's really can reduce the racking heart you know and also they have a legs too okay they have legs but what is a nice about those nice sleeve is that like they have those little firms, and which when you move, and it can break down the fibrotic tissues. When the fibrotic tissues is broke, and actually the fluid is starting to move. So those are easy to go. They are not so much expensive, but can save your life much better. You will find it's easy to use. You can put on while you're watching TV, take it off and brush your teeth, get yourself ready to sleep and put it on again. Save you a lot of time for that part. But most importantly, you know, if a sleeve doesn't fit, like this patient, I will not think it's a good sleeve. You know why? This is a too short. This is a too short, right? Actually, the sleeve will push all this fluid here. Later on, you will see all the fruit are here, does it? So if she has to do, she has to do from here, really to here, to push the floor. So make sure you really go to a very good therapist to have a very good um, sleep. And the same thing with stocking too. You know, you will have a, people have a, a lot of Lehigh stocking, right? Lehigh stocking. And, um, you know, to be, you know, to be honest, if you want to push the fluid, you don't want to have to push all this fluid on your knees because then you have put a lot of pressures on your knees. You have a problem. So basically, if you really want to work some of the stockings, you need to go high here, you know, to high until here. And so you can push the fluid here and up. So you need to really find a very experienced therapist and experienced feeder to help you to get a proper compression. Bad compression is worse. Okay, bad, if you have a bad compression sleeves, you better just throw it away and find a good one. 
rather than have it, you know, because it's not good. Now, with that, I want to give you something what I call the optimum. I want to you have this message across your brain saying, I can really achieve the optimum me or optimum you. So first you monitor yourself. Um, you for any of the patients who after the breast cancer treatment, basically the risk to develop lymphedema is lifetime. For anybody who have a lymphedema, actually the risk of exacerbation is a lifetime too. So anytime you're up and down, up and down, right? So when we talk about risk reductions here, there's two means. One is to prevent onset of lymphedema. Another is really to prevent any cellulitis, any exacerbations, and any infections, you know, for people who already have a swelling or lymphedema. So we're talking about this part. Second, and I want you to really imagine, there's a three needles of the fluid go through the lymphatic system. It's better for you to clear the fluid every day, better than not let it sit there and accumulate it, so that you have a, some motivations to do it. And I want you to understand it's important to have a nice deep breathing. So the nice deep breathing, basically, I talk about is different from any of the breathing. It's the ones I really want you to tighten your muscles. I want you to tighten your muscles from your toe, like when you breathe in through your nose, I want you to tighten the whole muscle, and then when you breathe out through your mouth, I want you to relax. So what you do, you do really, so you really tighten all the muscles, basically your thigh, your knee, and every place, and this, and you push the fruit up here, so you do. You don't need to do, 100 a day, okay? All I need you to do is each day when you wake up, when you stand up in your mirror, and just breathe three times. And for the leg patients and the lower extremity patients, or either abdominal um, lymphedema patients, you really need to tighten your lower extremity and your tummy to push the foot to the top. So you do. Three times is enough, okay, basically. And then you should do, before you go to sleep, the same three times. And in between, like between you get up and go to sleep, you should do as much as possible. As much as, you know, like remind yourself each time you sit. Second, I want you to create some local pumping. When I talk about local pumping, like for breast cancer patients, it's easy. So because for breast cancer patients, all you need to do is up your arms and make sure you're tightening your arms and open your, uh, open your fingers and basically slowly tighten your muscles and create local pump. So you do three times like this and you relax a little bit. You're up again. I want you to push down when you're really doing your muscles and let it go. So you just need to do three times. So six times with three breathing, three pumping, and three this with so six times. You're in a good shape. Uh, you're in good shape. So before you brush your teeth in the morning, before you brush your teeth, you sleep. For lower extremities, breathing is so important. Breathing is very important. So and tighten your thing. And what you can do is that you really can do this. You really can do this. But you have to tighten your muscle. So you have to see my muscle are pumping. You know, really tighten your muscle to that. And then you can also do like this. So which will really help you, you know, to help you to make the muscle pumps. And for the abdominal, basically, if you just breathe, tighten your tummy, it's fine, you know, will be. So you create some of the muscle pumping on the local um, places you also help your lymphatics to build, because once you build your muscle pattern, and your lymphatic patterns also build up, that's why it's a house. So for any of you, you have to remember breathing, if you cannot do anything in your life, breathing, breathing that only will help you to clear the fluid, will also oxygenate your tissues. When, when oxygenate your tissues, and actually will help the metabolism, even if you don't go diet, you will lose five pounds. 
because it increases your metabolism. Nice deep breathing will also really help you to decrease your stress. In that way, it will help you to decrease your inflammations. And for all those like a caregivers, what you can do to help the patient, you can help them to gently massage them, you know, like a very gentle. So basically, this is how much you give to them, very gentle. And, and that, what you can do for the breast cancer patient, this is how much gentle you can help them, you know. And for the um, for the abdominal abdo, abdomen edema patient, that's the thing you can help them. Just to gently stimulate the back, and then for the lower extremities, and basically gently go up here. And for the lower extremity patients, and you have to make sure because you have a much harder job. You have a gravity, which arms doesn't have it, you know, but your legs. You have to make sure if you have a something to help you to elevate, always elevate. But if you don't, so even if you sit right now, you really try to help yourself do the exercises <coughs> at any time, you know, any time. And elevation is beautiful. You have to do that, you know. And even with the arms, if you don't feel comfortable, you need to elevate that night when you sleep. And for the lower leg extremity uh, patients, I really recommend them to really put the pillow up, you know, elevate where they sleep, because that's when you do not have a muscle pumps when you sleep, you know. So you should do that too. And most importantly, drink 10 glasses of water, eight to 10 glasses of water each day, because in that way you can dilute your fluid and it can really help your food go. So that's very important for that part. And um, you let your symptoms to be your own um, guide. If there's no symptoms, you can just do two times a day and then that will help you. But if the symptoms are there, and you have to do as much as possible. But if you see any of the swelling getting worse, you need to call your doctor, okay? I think my time is almost there, right? Oh, I still have time, okay, good. And you also need to really what we call minimize acute pro-inflammatory environment. Those are the little injuries. For example, you know, um, any of the cuts and also the scratches you will, we will not be able to avoid because even me, I have cuts all the time, you know. But what you have to do for all of you, you need to have antibiotic creams in your purse. And you also need to have a hydrocortisone creams in your purse. So anytime you have a cut and you need to put antibiotic creams on until it is healed, you know, that's so important. And then any times, you know, uh, especially for the arm in the dinner patient, when you cook and when you go and, you know, people think it's a nonsense, actually, that's happened. I have one patient, it's just because of the uh, oil splash burn on her and all of a sudden the bloom, you know. So anytime you have those oil splash, steam burn, you need to really either put ice on for 15 minutes, put antibiotic ointment on, and then put a bandage on until, and that night, you need to elevate that one because other than that, the fluid is going to be here. You need to do your pumping as soon as possible so you can push the fluid back, you know, there. And then um, insect bites, actually, we can prevent anything, but we might not be able to prevent mosquito bites, right? So what you should do, you should always have a hydrocortisone creams with you, and also like an um, insect, uh, insect repellent, so that you can do that. And so, but if you unfortunately get bites, you need to put the um, hydrocortisone creams first. You rub it in until the initial inflammation is done, and you put antibiotic creams on, and until you will do that like throughout days. Depends on how uh, bad the mosquito is, and you have to do it throughout the days to really help yourself. So by those, you really can like, you know, reduce the acute inflammatory environment. And then skins, you need to really keep your skin for any of you. Skin care is so important. So you need to moisturize your skin, really keep it clean. And you can use any of the creams, as long as they do not have that much um, you know, chemicals to dry your skin. You really need to religiously really keep your skin moisturized. That's very important. That also will help you to decrease the 
uh, skin infections, you know, when you have a little cut, it will uh, heal very quickly. You know, it will heal very quickly. And basically, I gave you some reasons why you have to take up your skins. So dry skins basically can really induce a lot of injuries. So dry skins, even if you touch a paper, you will have a paper cut. You know, and also dry skin on the legs, especially you know during the winters, and you have little bit cracks on your toes, on your heels, and actually will make a lot of problems with lymphedema. So that's why taking care of your skin is so important. And uh, for all of this, you should read about this because it's all in your photo. But I think this is just give you the reason why you have to take care of your skin. Okay, that's it. And I give you this diagram so that you can uh, really build your routines. For example, you make the care as part of your getting ready for the day before you brush your teeth, before you go to bed. And uh, you know you really try to uh, help your meat flow and really keep your weight, but then you have to mindfully think, so don't let yourself go until the symptoms are so hard to bear with. So mindfully monitoring and say, how, I, how do I feel today? How heavy my legs are today? How heavy, how uncomfortable my arms are today? So mindfully monitoring, so oh, if I do this regimen five times, I feel much better, and just do that, just do that. And then you mindfully breathe it. So you can breathe anytime. You can breathe while you're sleeping, tighten your muscles. You can breathe even right now, I'm standing here. Or you can breathe while you're on the subway, you know, breathe. You can, the breathing you can do as much as possible. You will find out it's really, really helpful because it will be building your muscles. But when I talk about breathing, I'm talking about breathing, I'm teaching you. It's the muscle tightening breathing. So not like a sloppy. No, really it's a hard work, okay? You tighten your muscle, you work hard with that breathing. And then you have to, what kind of mindful movement? Every hour, get up and move. Get up and move. If you don't get up and move, do your exercises. Move. Pump your fingers. Do your exercises. Move around a little bit. And really protect yourself by prepare yourself. Have an antibiotic ailment in your bag. Have a hydrocortisol. If you do this, I calculate it. Not, not exceed 10, 10 minutes, basically. It's five minutes a day. But if you can do this five minutes a day or 10 minutes a day, you will find your lymphedema is much, much better. And you can really live up to your optimal view, you know, by that. Uh, I, you know, those are the um, actually quotes I gave to you. Those are the, my patients throughout my research program. So we just finished the interventional study, like the ways I gave to you, and we just did. We had a very good success, and those are the sentences they get. So I thought um, I thought I would like to really share with you. So hopefully you can be motivated. You know, basically you have to say I need to incorporate breathing pumping exercise into my daily routine. I will do the deep breathings while I move my body. You know, so and I will do physical exercises every day. So walking is good, swimming is good, dance is good, yoga is good, all of them. As long as you use your muscles are good. And so I will achieve or keep ideal weight. And by that you can do it. So I think, you know, I don't want to read and, and because you have it, but I want to make that as your daily affirmation. If somebody, those are directly from my patient's quotes. So those are the patients who did it and they know how to do it. Hopefully this will be something that motivate you to build a routine. And with that, I would like to take some of your questions so I'll see if I can help you. Yeah.